Hello, everyone. Welcome to tonight's, let's see here, let's get lights, Tuesday night <laughs> raw Q&A. Um, I'm Dr. Andy. And I am so glad to be here tonight. It is Thanksgiving week, right? So lots of extra things on everybody's plates. Um, and so we'll see if um, we have anybody joining me. I'm here every Tuesday night. We go live 6 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. So Denver time, which is where I have um, my animal chiropractic practice. I would be in practice 20 years come January, which is amazing. Um, and so I still see lots of puppy dogs all day long. Hi, Keisha. Hi, Kyle. Welcome, welcome. Um, sorry, I had to finish chewing up my dinner and then I had a little bit of a contact emergency. I had to get the new hair out of my um, eye before I went live today. Um, are you having a celebration party? Hi, Jessica. Celebration party. I don't I'm, Am I, uh, should I be following? I, I'm not following Kyle. I'm sorry. Celebration. The big, oh, I see. Thank you. Keisha got that. <laughs> I'm like, huh? What? Um, so blonde moment number two today. I, I was a half hour off with a client and I'm like, where are you? What's going on? And I told her a half hour later than I wanted her to be here. So maybe, hey, Keisha, make a note. Maybe we should have some kind of celebration celebration party, something like that. I didn't even know I could um, stick with something for 20 years, right? <laughs> I don't think we ever know that. Um, let's see. I have a question for all of you guys. I've been mulling over um, all day. Um, and so I would love your input on this. And I'm not even sure how I want to phrase it. Because I transition my animals off a of kibble to homemade kind of still really prepared. We used a lot of honest kitchen and it finally took me a little while to get to raw, right? That was my journey. And I think everybody has a journey. Um, but what made you go raw? Like mine and this, if you can write on the side, that would be awesome. Um, uh, or maybe you can help me refine the question or we'll, we'll kind of see where the conversation. And of course, it's Q&A. So, you know, if you have any questions for me or anything um, interesting and fun going on with your critters in the past week, would love to hear about that, too. So what made you go raw? Was it the sense of that's what they should be eating, which I think I, I get that answer a lot from clients, like even people that haven't transitioned to raw, um, a raw food diet, species appropriate diet for their dogs, they, in their heart of hearts or in their gut, they know that that is the proper food, right? And then, so it's like a two part, two part. But what if there was, or when was the moment that no matter what anybody else said, you were going to stick with it? Because I see so many people just crumble at the first sign of opposition, right? So Kyle, so it was Darren Olson. Um, and so was it, you know, was it somebody you came across? Was it information on a podcast? Was it your neighbor? Was it just like... Olean. I'm not familiar either way, I'm afraid. Um, let me see. Let me, I'm going to look them up. But, you know, and then I think there's this just second, and I, I don't, I don't know what my moment was. Okay, the author. He's an author. Of course. He uh, labels, Okay. So he, he did from down to earth with Zach Efron. So did he, Kyle, did he talk about raw feeding in that book? I'll have to check this guy out. I'm not familiar. 
and that's why can I see it it's boring though cool we'll check it out awesome you know what was that you know and then I think it, it people do it and maybe they do it Okay, he did a podcast. But yeah, he has this. What he Kyle's talking about is it was tw here, 20 down to earth with Zach Efron, spending nearly 20 years exploring the planet. He did a Netflix docuseries, but he had a podcast with the species appropriate diet. Yeah, so Jessica did the kind of the same journey I did, and it wasn't overnight. Um, yeah, and I think everybody's journey is different, and they find out about it. Um, a lot of people find out about it maybe for a, a health reason, right? But and you don't don't have to answer this. Maybe just mull it over. But what was the moment where you knew that no matter what opposition or what anybody else said, you you would not change it? Like you knew that this is where you needed to be with your animals. Fatal conveniences. That's a great term. I'll definitely be listening to some of his podcasts. That is awesome. And yes, we fall victim to, uh, to fatal conveniences. We are victims of fatal conveniences. <laughs> Let's just say it. Oh, you're sitting next to each other. <laughs> I did not know that. That's hysterical. Okay. So now, it's, okay, awesome. Oh, God, that's scary. Mm. Oh, good. Good. Oh, I'm, I, you know, it's probably scarier than I even think it is. And I think it's pretty scary, right? Yeah. I think we're all victims of fatal conveniences. That's exactly what our pharmaceuticals are, right? And our prepared food and all of that and so on and so forth. Yeah, I'll, I'll check it out. I'll report back because I, I'm, I do a lot of podcast listening through the week. Um, mostly, honestly, while I'm preparing my raw, my raw food for my animals in the morning, <laughs> there's a good chunk of time there, right? Um, because there is probably no way anyone could ever say anything that would make me change my dog's diet. And I see people just, whoop, you know, pop off of it like it's no big deal. It's just interesting. I just thought we'd start there. Um, let's see. I had a fun little client, new dog this morning, um, 10, 10 year old little guy. And uh, he had quite the journey. I think I pieced it most together, mostly together. Um, but at age, no turning back. Absolutely. Yeah. What is your point of no, no what was your point of, um, Point of no return. There you go. What was your point of no return? There we go. I can talk really. Um, this little guy, a little Maltese mix thing, super cute, came in. And because he was constipated at age three and four, he went on the high fiber prescription food. And then at age nine and a half, he had to have 20 teeth pulled out of his head. Um, see, I think Keisha's story is more similar. Okay, I will find the Joe Rogan and the Will Harris. I will find that one. Thank you. Turn me on to another rabbit hole of craziness. Um, but I think Keisha's story is very similar. You know, you hear about it, right? There's the Rumorville, there's an occasional something somebody says, and it, it always makes sense. And then started wrong when there's a problem, right? Noticed um, tummy stuff. Um, Keisha has kitties, and they were not exactly thrilled about it, which is pretty regular, right? And then um, they do the freeze dried. The kitties will the kitties will mostly agree to freeze dried, right? Um, but with cats, if you can at least get them on canned and just two meals a day, I will do backflips. <laughs> we can just throw out the kibble for cats. I mean, dogs too, absolutely. But kitties, we can just get them on canned and feed them two meals a day. So they have a chance 
to um, deplete and balance out their hormones during the day because it's the constant snacking that they do on free fed kibble that leads to hyperthyroidism and diabetes and kidney failure, which are your three top big diseases that kitties like to do. Um, they love the cooked brisket and chicken. <laughs> cooked brisket for kitties? Who knew? Right. Um, but back to this little guy. So for his constipation, went on fiber rich prescription food. I don't know what it's called. Don't care. And did that for five and a half, six years, and then went in for a dental and pulled out 20 feet, 20 teeth. Because that's what happens to little dogs' mouths. And I have to admit, I have used that line with people. Little dog mouths tend to have more bacteria. They don't tend to chew on things. They tend to have more issues. Um, but 20 teeth um, is intense, especially for, and I'm going to be really judgy right now, for a dog that was in a home right? Not in the shelter system, not on the streets, not having no vet care, right? So that's intense. And, you know, I do think the genetics play a part with teeth and some dogs just have bad teeth. But my gut on this and my sense of, yeah, there's, there's, there's teeth left after 20 being pulled. Actually, he's going back in to get three more pulled next week. Um, they know not only did they put him on fiber prescription food, they gave him the big pieces, not the little kibble size for a little dog, but the big pieces to make him chew. I, I almost like just, I, I, uh, I don't know. It was one of those fix your face moments because I've talked about this on many platforms. Maybe I haven't talked about it here. I know I've done it in my emails. I know I've done it with Didi, but um, dogs do not have amylase in their mouth. Okay. Amylase digest carbohydrates back to those enzymes. Those enzymes come up a lot. They're very important in the whole digestive process. And so when we put mashed potatoes in our mouth, they will start to liquefy. We have amylase. We can digest. We start the, the digestion process of carbohydrates in our mouth. Dogs have enzymes in their mouths, but they don't have amylase. And so the big chunks of kibble then had to be chewed, right? Had to be. He couldn't actually swallow them, you know, as dogs' mouths are designed to grab, shred, swallow. That's what those teeth are designed for. That's what their mouths are designed for. He couldn't do that. So he chewed all the kibble and all that kibble sat on his teeth. Because their veterinarian... Um, bought into the lie that you need the crunch of the kibble to help clean the teeth. So my sense of it was that really contributed to the losing those teeth. And now after they pulled all the teeth and I actually fixed, I don't know, cranial bones. We had to fix his nasal bones. I had to adjust all of his teeth, which is just an interesting little process. Anyway, I had to get in and fix his mandible. He has a head tilt. The whole time they're telling her after the dental and all of this kind of came to a head um, that there was no way the dental could have contributed to the head tilt and the ear infection and everything that he was kind of going on because he was kind of wobbly in the rear. He was kind of off in the front right. And I'm like, excuse my French, I'm like, bullshit. They have to open the jaw. They have to intubate. They have to, um, and if they're digging out 20 teeth, who knows what kind of angles that head was? Who knows how the jaw was? Who knows how, you know, if there was, who knows if they had all the right equipment, like itty bitty tiny equipment for this itty bitty dog. You actually need, some little dogs need to go to the dental specialist just because they have the equipment for it. And I don't know this vet. I don't even know who the vet was. And so I'm like, no, his TMJ is off. Cranial bones are off. His upper cervicals are off. And so we, we adjusted him today and I'm hoping he's feeling so much better. Maybe not tomorrow, maybe the next day, 
he pretty he was such a little trooper he really liked it all and he he was you know his chihuahua was on and he was shaking a little bit but he really liked all the adjustments and we put him back in his kennel and then he just kind of went down and didn't move while mom and i finished up with whatever questions she had and he's gonna come back after the next dental um but now he's on an oral prescription food kibble Uh, I, and so eh, even I, and I know the question has come up over the, you know, how do we talk to people about, you know, and even I, it's like, okay, where's my little, where's my little in, right? And I think I finally said, you know, are, are you open to discussing the diet? She's like, anything but raw because I travel too much. So. There was not a lot of wiggle room there. Um, we did talk about, I did, I almost feel bad saying stuff like the six years on that food probably contributed to all of this and that kibble's not needed for this and blah, blah, blah. And she, she took it really well, <laughs> but you know, it's also making her feel awful because she depended on somebody else that should know better. Right. Granted, we are all responsible for doing our own research and, and doing our own things, right? Um, but we're hope I'm hoping we can get him at least feeling better, and then maybe I can keep working on, and maybe we'll get. Don't get a dog. Oh, uh, I know. Once you know, it's hard to unknow. But I don't think any everybody wants to know, right, Kyle? Like I think people prefer their heads in the sand and. Because his constipation went away on the food, I bet there was never a moment where she turned it over and looked at the ingredients and realized there was absolutely no nutrition to support anything else that was going on with him, just the fiber. Um, right? Like, so we'll see. What a little trooper. He's now 10, and we'll see what we can do. Maybe we can... I did bring up canned. I'm like, I know Dee Dee would be like, ugh, don't even. But, you know, at least you're dealing with 90% meat and something soft, which he's going to need. Um, um, food just isn't food. Food is information. Yeah, but, and I agree, Kyle, that I'm not disagreeing, but um, I need to get these earrings off. They hit the ear pods and then. I don't know if that's going on the recording. So hang on one sec. It's bugging the crap out of me either way. Okay. Oh, uh, food is information. A food, I mean, down to its molecular sense is, is where the body gets its energy. It supports the mitochondrial, you know, in our cells and it's everything. It's not just, right, Kyle? It's not just what you can dump in the bowl or on our plate. I mean, honestly, we're not much better. We're, we just have thumbs and can open the refrigerator, right? Um, uh, yeah, where they open other, like, freeze-dried and stuff like that. Yeah. I'm working on it. I'll, I'll keep you posted. We'll at least get his little, little head feeling better. Poor dude. All right. Anybody got any questions? Anything going on? I can keep babbling. I have, I have three of my regulars, so, yeah, journey started with my mother and her condition, yeah. I actually, so I started, I changed my dog's diet 10 years ago, right? And then over a course of maybe 18 months to two years, you know, turned into like, like Neely would say a dog snob, right? Yeah. Um, so, so many years ago, right. And because of my chiropractic background, you know, I had already, um, nixed those shot things and we never, I never in my adult life did heartworm, flea and tick. Like I just really knew about, you know, chemicals, 
um, environmental stuff. And I talked about it a little bit with Dee Dee about my mom on the podcast. I don't remember when that was, but she had environmental illness before anybody had environmental illness. So we had no toxic, no toxins in our household growing up. I went to the chiropractor if we was sick. I think I've been on antibiotics three times in my life. Like that's always been just a part of who I was and, and all of that. And so that was, you know, some of the impetus to getting the dogs shifted, but it wasn't until two years ago when I went, I, I would joke about it. I'd be like, I feed my dogs better than I feed myself. Ha 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 ha. But it wasn't until about two, two and a half years ago where it started catching up with me. And I started researching our stuff, like people stuff more so than dog stuff and just how, oh my God, misguided. And um, yeah, what did Kyle say? How misguided we are with food and nutrition. Um, you know, and it's, it, it's in, it's insane on how much big pharma and big food control our lives and every, and, and, and it's, yeah. And so then I'm like, so now I've, you know, that journey of now I'm pretty intense about what I eat. And if I was going to be around doing this stuff, I wanted to feel good doing it. And I, I could tell I was starting to get stressed and starting, you know, thyroid starting to tank and this, need, you know, this needed to be tightened up and this needed to be cleaned up. I mean, my husband thinks I'm crazy with what I'm eating these days. Um, but it's, it's really about maintaining the health that I have. And it's really hard with our soil depletion and our, our food choices. And it takes time and it takes money and it takes diligence. Um, and that's, you know, that's what it is. Jessica writes, my friend's dog just got diagnosed with a heart murmur, grade four, an enlarged heart, and it's pressing on the trachea a little bit. I know there's a lot of factors and all and all but anything you can advise. Told her about the holistic vet and Chinese herbs and the diet, but is that enough to help? I'm trying to convince her to go that route. The dog is on. Yeah, permanent. Yeah, I know it. That did the usual drug, some sort of medicine. Yeah, what is it's premeditar. Yeah. Oh God. If I if I could see it, I could end up saying it right. Um shoot. Maybe it'll come to me. Yeah. How old's the dog, Jessica? Yes. Um, Pima Benden. No R. Pima Benden. Thank you. Unless there's another one called Prima Benden, but it, I think it's just Pima Benden. Yeah. Like 10. Yeah. Um, yeah. Kiss the ground. Okay. Kiss the ground on Netflix. I will do that. Oh, this is a big one, right, Jessica? I, I, the heart stuff that is being diagnosed these days makes me so suspicious. Like it is so intense right now. Every dog has a murmur. Every dog needs a, a medication according to conventional medicine, right? Um, every, a, a lot of dogs at like this age out of the blue, like, and I don't know how out of the blue, but a lot of them are, are just being diagnosed with um, these heart murmurs and these enlarged hearts without any history of a murmur, maybe when they were in last year for a vet checkup. Um, and I'm like, what the hell is going on? Um, Neely would just say it, it, it doesn't even exist. Um, <laughs> I'm like, okay, yes. And we still have people that have animals that are buying this and how can we help them? Right. Um, and yes, the holistic, I find the heart drugs, of course they work, but they are always causing more issues in the cardiovascular system. They're always, and then you need another one. Um, absolutely. Change the diet, 
the holistic vet, the Chinese herbs, absolutely. If there is, if we can support them anyway without pharmaceuticals, um, they don't have to stay on the pimobendin if they don't want to. But you know, if people start their journey here with this, it's really hard. They don't have their sea legs yet. Like I have my sea legs. You have your sea legs with the raw, with the alternative options, with going to Dr. Jasek for stuff, right? We have our sea legs. When you're thrown into the deep end with all of this, for someone without any sea legs for themselves, even, even folks that do it for themselves, it seems to take them forever to get to their, their dogs. You know, they can do a lot of the same, pretty much all the same similar stuff with their dogs, right? And so many of them just take so long for the light bulb to go on. I don't know what that's about. Um, right? Like, oh my goodness. But when you're thrown into the deep end of the pool with all of this and you're scared and the doc, the vets are telling you to do this, it's, it's generally what people do. Um, but it doesn't mean she has to stay on it and she can go and, and you can work your, the holistic vet can work in conjunction with your cardiologist. Um, I don't, I haven't seen personally, anecdotally, just me, a lot of things that are able to support that long-term, even really, even the pharmaceuticals. That's a big deal. The enlarged heart, the murmur, I mean, all of it is, is a really big deal. Um, the, the first and foremost is you change the diet. You, you do that yesterday, right? And Kyle says he's preparing their food for tomorrow. Um, yeah. Jessica also says, I just asked my friend what the side effects are and she didn't answer. Probably, we, she probably hasn't looked it up. She probably hasn't looked up the drug. Most people don't. Um, and a lot of the side effects of heart drugs are more heart issues. I know. <sighs> you know. Oh, the vet. No, 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 no. I think the only time really side effects are discussed is if, if is chemo and radiation. I'm. You know, even like antibiotics, right? They they just gloss over, you know, long-term effects or, you know, other stuff that could happen with them. They don't say anything about them. You know, they 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 rarely ever mention DI, GI disruption with the NSAIDs, right? I mean, everyone kind of knows about the kidney and liver, but, you know, no, side effects. Um, I love this. I don't know where this came from, but it was... Um, pointed at pharma, big pharmaceutical drugs. Those are not side effects. Those are just the effects. And I'm like, that's brilliant because that is what you get. You get effects. You get the effects of helping the heart function. You also get the effects of whatever else it's going to do to that heart. And I just thought that was like brilliant. They're not side effects. They're the effects of these drugs. And I think that's just bloody brilliant. Um, change the food. Yeah. I would look up the drug for them. I did that the other day for a client. They, were, I did not know what this drug was and I looked it up, sent her what it was and I sent up all the side effects. So keep in mind that all of the stuff that you're already seeing with your animal are also the effects of this drug, you know, and that gets really hard. Um, I, you know, Keisha, I don't know if the Hawthorne's definitely not going to hurt. Right. But I don't know. And this is, it's pretty, unfortunately, pretty advanced, um, for this little pup. Um, I'm not that familiar with, I like Hawthorne, um, before there's a problem, um, for supportive care. Um, maybe when you have, a low grade murmur or like my friend's dog who had heartworms and they went through the heavy duty treatment. She does Hawthorne to support the heart from now on. So that kind of stuff, um, that would have to be some research. 
I do know that standard processes, um, canine, I can do this. I guess it, cardiac, there we go. That was the word I was looking for, sorry. Canine cardiac support has done amazing um, with heart stuff. And you're looking, there's a lot of ingredients in that um, and all of it, okay, I'm not gonna go with all of it. The vast majority is a whole food product. So you could even, I think Kyle mentioned it last time, ancestral um, supplements. Um, and I know there's other ones. There's heart and soil and car optimal carnivore. Maybe they have a heart product. And so treat heart, you know, treat like with like. Um, Uh, great. Jessica says, great idea. I can look it up. Thank you, Hawthorne and my dogs, Chinese herbs, grade one heart murmur. Yeah. And the heart murmur now doesn't show up on the EKG. The heart, um, and I learned this um, from my standard process day, not days, but classes I've taken with them and webinars I've done with them and, and all of that, that the heart is actually the fastest organ to respond to proper nutrition. So yes, beef hearts. Absolutely. Um, that would be phenomenal. Bison hearts. Yeah. Hearts. Get some turkey hearts if you can't get them. Um, yeah. Heart, heart, and more heart. And then, yeah, if you can find some desiccated heart supplement, add that in. Um, but yeah, the heart is the fastest organ to respond to nutrition and supporting it. So There you go. And depending, and, and if you want to go the standard process route, you'll just have to find a, maybe a chiropractor that, or maybe a vet that carries it. Chiropractor would probably order it for you too. Yeah, hearts are cheap. Yeah, when it comes to organs. All creature bodies phenomenal. They are. They are. And I think I talked about this, but I'll mention it again. I got an, I get emails from Dr. Tobias. He's a, a holistic veterinarian. Sorry. And uh, he was talking about cardiac issues. And he's a veterinarian. He's a Canadian veterinarian, as far as I can I can remember and tell. And he's a big proponent of chiropractic, which, you know, okay. I like that, right? Um, like if your dog has chronic diarrhea, go get the lumbars adjusted. All the innervation comes out of that lumbar spine into the intestines, right? But he was talking about cardiac issues. And, and I think I have talked about this here, but I'll do it again. But those restriction of the nerves to the heart are in those upper thoracics. So dogs have seven cervicals like we do, and they have 13 thoracics, we have 12, and then they have seven lumbars, we have five. But the thoracic spine, it's kind of hard here, but starts as those scaps come up. So you have the neck and then the scaps start and it kind of, they do this. And that big dip is a lot of the innervation into the heart and they're underneath the scapulas. And so it's very hard for me to get in there. And I get in there, I'm usually on top of the dog and my hands are up in their armpits and they're kind of like, oh my God, this woman is crazy. What is she doing? And I actually move a lot of the rib cage and sternum to, to get in there and move those thoracics the best I can. Because a lot of times those scaps are so tight, I can't get in there. I do have my tool that gets in there. But what Dr. Tobias was talking about is that's very, a very restrictive area. It is. And if you look at dogs that generally have cardiac issues like Dobermans and Great Danes, especially those Dobermans, they're very straight and they're very compact and they have a really big chest. You should see the chest cavity on my Doberman. It's insane how deep chested he is. And, and not getting in there and doing chiropractic could contribute to cardiac issues down the line. 
because they're not getting all the motion and all the um, adjustments and all the stimulation in there. And I'm like, you know, he put it so eloquently. I mean, it's amazing. I almost want to just copy and paste it into an email and send it out so everybody had it. Because there's no way with my minimal writing skills I could convey what he said in these couple of paragraphs because it was amazing. And this is something I I knew intuition wise, right? I don't have any documentation or, you know, a, a really specific anecdotal that adjustments change their heart thing. Usually they come in because their back hurts and they have a heart thing and maybe, you know, and it's just, it's so hard, but it was so well put. So depending on you know, maybe this dog at age three got T-boned at the dog park so bad that now we've had restrictions at C7, T1, T1, T2, T, you know, T2, T, T3, and the innervation to the heart's been compromised for years. And the dog's never been to the chiropractor as an example, like, or that could contribute to the genetics, contribute to the poor diet. But it, it's so cool. Um, especially if you geek out on chiropractic stuff like I do, right? Like that's what I do. Um, I do remember a fellow chiropractor talking about, um, hey, Keisha, you might even remember. I think Dr. Draws was talking about this on one of my old podcasts that she had a dog come in with, you know, a grade something or ever for the murmur and all that mom was, I don't know what all mom was doing, right? But the chiropractic really helped and changed that for her. Or I could be like losing my mind and, and making that all up. It, it, there's a distinct possibility. But um, people that, and I've always said this, people that have brought their dogs in for regular chiropractic care. And that could look like three times a year for their lives. And that's it. That's all. And maybe a couple times when they hurt themselves. Those dogs do better, live longer, and are happier to be here until they don't want to be here anymore. And I don't have, you know, I don't have any answers beyond, you know, so we stimulate the nervous system, maybe, you know, regulating the neurologic system to the heart, to the intestines, all of that is just, it, maybe we need to give it more credit than I even give it, right? Um, are some breeds more elastic than others. Mm, I think some are less elastic. Yeah, I mean, I think it mm, less elastic, right? Like my the bully breeds, the pit bulls, the English bulldogs, the American bulldogs, um, boxers are much more much more difficult to adjust because of the muscle mass. Um, and that's pretty breed specific. Um, I think some dogs are more flexible than other dogs, just like some people are more flexible than um, other people. And that could be genetic. Uh, you know, the less, what about beagles? What about beagles? They don't tend to be as muscled up as what I just listed off. They're just kind of regular, kind of middle of the road. Um, generally they don't tend to get too front loaded per se, like your bulldogs end up bulldogging. Well, they do bulldog, right? And then we call that when dogs become front loaded, um, that they're bulldogging, even though they're not a bulldog. Um, you know, I think beagles are generally pretty, pretty sturdy little guys. I mean, they're a great size, right? Not too big, not too little. It's the really little ones that jump up and down on the furniture all the time that, I, I work on and then it's the big dogs that, you know, do the same thing and then go out and play at dog parks and are not necessarily as agile and all that. Um, oh, your beagles have an appointment. And that's awesome. I'm so excited. You'll have to come back and report how it went and how they reacted. There's still to this day, and you know, I'm not ready to quit yet. Although I do threaten on some days because, you know, everybody has their days, right? That there is nothing like, a dog getting their first adjustment and the the reaction that you get, you know, some are like, what the hell is this shit? Some are like, oh, that's the best thing ever. Some are like, 
in no bloody way. Do it again. I bite you. You know, and, and it, you just, and honestly, I'm pretty good. Sometimes you just, you can never tell what you're going to get. Um, it's going to be, it's going to be so cool. Yeah. You have to, you have to let us know. Yeah. Somebody's look more compact or tightly structured. Yeah. Like those English bulldogs, they're rough, man. They're so rough. Uh, we'll try to record it. <laughs> At least get a picture, like a, something, right? <laughs> It'll be awesome. Um, beagles are kind of run of the mill. They, you know, especially since they don't have the smushed faces. Oh my gosh, smushed faces. Oh, we, did, we talked a little bit about them. Have we talked about bites? Bites are fascinating. I only learned this not so many years ago. Um, underbites. Yeah, that, you know, your bulldogs that usually have them, your shih tzus that usually have them. Shih tzus, you watch them walk, you know, their front feet are like this, the back knees are like completely straight. It's like, oh my gosh. And they come in and I get my hands on them and none of it is particularly painful. It's amazing. But generally they have that underbite, right? Um, and when your dog has that underbite, even if they shouldn't, like, let's say you have bad breeding, whatever you want to call it, in a beagle, and they have this little bit of an underbite. Um, it actually lends itself, the neurology lends itself to a weak back end. And there's nothing you can do about this. So chiropractic has to manage it and manage that back end. But you'll hear it just kind of said in passing, you know, um, bulldogs and their bad hip, those weak hips, or shih tzus and their bad knees. Well, a lot of that is just because they're so weak in the rear because of the neurology from that bite in their mouth. Oh, the dog is plant-based. That's amazing. That's my code for, um, cause it is amazing. It's amazingly not a good idea. Okay. I even have a, I have a client. She's a, a riot. She has great Danes. She currently has three Great Danes and I don't even know how many cats and she raw feeds and she herself is a vegan. I think that's just amazing. I, and, and that's not, I love it because she's not putting her ideals onto an animal that is not meant to eat that way. So I think it's just amazing. And she got, I don't, I don't know what her bills are. But um, yeah, and she literally was talking one visit about somebody she knew and the dog was plant based and the dog like just died at 18. And she was she was so funny. She's like, that almost like irks me like the dog that's plant based shouldn't be living that long. <laughs> but we don't know how well that dog was living. Right. Like. Dogs can live a long time on the streets eating crap in an abusive home, in a shitty shelter, in, you know, all of these different scenarios, right? But it doesn't mean they're vital and happy and healthy. They just happen to be alive, which is, okay, I'm going to go out on a little bit of a limb, which is generally all our standards for people these days, too, is as long as you're alive, doesn't mean you feel good, doesn't mean you want to create anything in the world doesn't mean you feel up to interacting and being contributory, but you know, that bar is set pretty low. You're alive. Right. Um, <laughs> okay. That might need to be taken out at some point. Sorry. Um, see, okay. So Jessica's a vegan and, and they, yeah, see, it's awesome. Okay, cool. Um, I was just going back and seeing what we got. Yeah. Awesome. Let me feed this thing. Yep. Ah, oh, pets always come first, right? Anything else tonight? It's kind of quiet. It's a holiday weekend, so I'm so, so grateful um, for you guys. So appreciative. Oh, let's see. What else do I got? Interesting wise. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, thank you, Jessica. I love you too. Kyle always comes up with these questions. And now I, I don't know the answer to them. Damn it. What is the big deal about feeding pig brains? And why is it so good for them aside from like feeds like? Um, I might just have to look that up. Because, <laughs> yes, yeah, the like feed like right i wonder i wonder what the cholesterol level is because basically brains that's what they're made of is cholesterol so i wonder i wonder all right pig brains yeah so taurine would be um amino acid which is you know a component of the fat so yeah the cholesterol and the fat content um i wonder and i i would imagine all brains right but what's the big deal about pig brains would be interesting because i don't know um and what have you ever have you seen brains of any other kind? I've never even seen any. I haven't been able to get pig brains for ages from Dee Dee, but have you even seen any other brains? Mm. Well, you can buy. You can buy whole mice. I know you can do that. I've always planned on doing that for my kitties, and I just never have done it. Um, we know, well, the duck heads, we don't have chicken heads. I have duck heads. And the duck heads, yeah, the brains would be in there. Um, we know cats eat the heads off of mice because that brain is so full of taurine. But I wonder... If it is like the amino acid content, but why pig brains? Yeah. Yeah, mine love the duck heads. We do a lot of duck heads. I don't know. All right. I have my my marching orders. Um, I don't know, Kyle, are you or Jessica on my email list? Because I you were Kyle was responsible for this email that went out. Today, today is Tuesday, right? Um, because you asked about the pancreas, because I was talking about torch and the enzymes and hormones and what I actually meant by pancreatic insufficiency. And I felt like I did a terrible, terrible job answering you last week. So I, I did do a little deep dive on the pancreas and its function. Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, if you go to Animal, we Keisha can answer that. <laughs> animal Magic Care, and then do they get a? Is it scroll down the first page and it'll pop up? Keisha will know this. I should, I should, but I don't. Keisha helps me out. She keeps me on track. Okay, so just AnimalMagicCare.com and scroll down, and you can fill out the little email thing, right? Um, what was I talking about? So I answered a little bit more about pancreatic insufficiency and there's in the email. So thank you, Kyle. And now who, who knows, this might be next week's email, or at least I'll bring back um, a, some of the answer here next week. So I appreciate my little homework because um, God knows I don't know, don't know everything. Um, and there's always more to learn. Uh, let's see. Anything else? Or do you think we can call it a little early? We talked about all kinds of things today. All right, my friends. I think for a holiday week, we'll call it a few minutes early. I'm so grateful that you are here. I will be back next Tuesday. Yeah, I, I have a trip. Going, I'm going back to Chicago um, for animal chiropractic course with my mentor. He's a board-certified chiropractic 
neurologist. He's a certified animal chiropractor, and he's an AK doc, which is applied kinesiology. He's amazing. He's the detail man in my life. Like, I get all my best adjustments from him, the patterns from him, um, new ways the muscle test, just, like, all my teeth adjustments and cranial bone adjustments came from him. And so I'm going to go do a class beginning of December. But it doesn't interrupt this, but I'm going to come back with new stuff. I always come back with new stuff. So I'm so excited about that. I'll be back here next week. Um, I'm always talking to Didi and those podcasts are always being released. Um, yes, have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Um, yeah, and so grateful for all of you out there. And until next time, how much fun can you have with your animals? Bye-bye.